please bear with us as we end our closed session. May I have a motion to return to open session and approve certificate number 16-17-10 for the closed session. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by, did you get that? Ms. Rehm yeah. and Ms. Miller-Richard. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Boyd? Yes. Ms. Holmes? Yes. Ms. Kay? Yes. Ms. Miller-Richard? Yes. Ms. Rehm? Yes. Reverend Bailey? Yes. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you for that. Next, we have the approval of our agenda. Uh, there is a uh, correction on our agenda. We need to change or add an agenda item under action items. We're going to add under school calendar for 2017-18, 18, we're going to add 3A school calendar 1617. May I have a motion to approve our agenda this evening? So moved. Second. Are there any other changes or discussion beside the change that I made? That was moved by me. Ms. K. Ms. K. Mm -hmm. Second by Ms. Boyd. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 6, 2017 to March 6, 2017 regular school board meeting? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Our recognitions. We now come to that favorite part of our meeting, and we will start with the word of the month, risk takers, to be presented by Lafayette, and we will follow with a replay of the video from the March Word of the Month by Walker Grant. Well, we want to say good evening. So good evening to Mr. Bailey, all our board members, Dr. Melton, and all our guests and students here tonight. We are very proud and excited to have our Lafayette Lions scholars with us tonight. And tonight we will be presenting on risk takers the word of the month, and it is presented by our fifth grade performing arts students, and these students are Caroline Bond, Olivia Bird, Amelia Garman, Mina Goodwin, Erin Hancock, Lauren Holland, Abigail Lyles, Jamin Mack, Jonathan Ortiz, Jair Poe, and Zarius Ward. And they are led by none other than Mrs. Clintina Hankerson, and we're very proud of her as well. So we will, without further ado, we would love to bring them up this time.
and resilience in the face of challenges and change. We are proud to be risk takers. <laughs> All right. Outstanding. That was Tigerific, Lafayette Lions. <laughs> That's a word you'll learn when you get to Walker Grant Middle School next year. Good evening, everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to be a risk taker again this evening and make sure that we have an opportunity to see the hard work of our students who put together a very unique um, video that they wanted to present of the word of the month using the world languages that we have, as well as a few other students showing the population um, at Walker Grant and it's about caring and I hope we can hear it I hear it's still a little bit low with the volume but we're going to try it one more time good evening Dr. Nelson, Miss Catalyst, School Board and all guests Walker Grant Middle School is proud to share with you the word of the month caring caring is showing sensitivity towards the needs and things of other students here in the First Board Study Public Schools, we are a world of caring. For example, we recently host our first World Showcase event to show care for our community and the many cultural representatives. Thank you, Mr. George. That last picture we could have left out. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of At least it wasn't the one of me kissing the camel, so we're going to move on. Um, they really enjoyed that and having all of the students come together and share in their languages. So thank you for um, giving us a second opportunity to show that video. And so now I also have the privilege this evening of talking about the Virginia uh, General Assembly. Three of our Walker Grant Middle School eighth grade students were selected to serve as pages this year during this year's session. Um, the student pages had the opportunity to live in Richmond and they would stay there during the week. They would come home on the weekends to be with their families, but they also popped in, what many of you don't know, and came to our Saturday sessions to make sure they were getting their work done. While they were there in Richmond, they had to get their work done in the evening hours and they had very long hours, but we're very proud of them. They had to maintain good grades and keep up with every assignment. It's a really hard um, project to be um, a part of. So while it was an honor to be chosen, it was also a tremendous commitment, and we're so proud that all of these students have met that challenge. So if you could help me celebrate tonight these three students, we'll start with Charles Bird, who is the son of Mr. Matthew Bird and Mrs. Vanessa Bird. <laughs> Our next student is Delia Rabbiton, daughter of Mr. Paul Rabbiton and Mrs. Beth Rabbiton. Congratulations, Delia. Our next student is Abe Rowe, son of Mrs. Jennifer Rowe. <laughs> okay, let's give these students one more round of applause. Congratulations. What an accomplishment. At this time, I'd like to welcome Dr. Rochelle to the stage. This one. Oh, that's for Alexis Clark. She 
Good evening, Chairman Bailey, school board members, Dr. Melton, and guests. I am pleased to recognize the following student athlete who won an individual championship during the winter season of 2017. For track and field, Alexis Clark, daughter of Ms. Tammy Clark and Mr. Stacy Clark. Alexis is a six-time Virginia State champion, including back-to-back -back indoor shot put championships in 2016 and 2017. She holds the indoor state meet record for the shot put. In fact, this year Alexis was undefeated in the shot put and number one for all divisions. She is the USA number one junior and ranked number nine overall. The freelance star recognized Alexis as all area and she served as a team captain this year. Please welcome Alexis. Congratulations. <laughs> also competing during the winter season was the academic quiz team. Coached by Mr. David Blosser, the team was undefeated during the regular season and won the Battlefield District Championship. The games are divided between toss-up questions open to individuals and team rounds. Our team captains had a combined score of 560 points for the season in the individual rounds and were the linchpins of the team rounds. Although we were eliminated after three games at the conference level, we won one game, 240 to 190, and lost our other two games by only a five and 10 point margin. This year's captains were Michael DiGiacomo, son of Mr. Paul DiGiacomo and Mrs. Robin DiGiacomo. Not sure if you get <laughs> Sam Poth, son of Mr. Mark Poth and Mrs. Mary Poth. And Carter Boyd, son of Mr. Matthew Boyd and Mrs. Jennifer Boyd. He's at his Eagle Review, Eagle Board of Review tonight, so thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> academic team. Next, our James Farmer Scholarship winner. The Virginia Black History Month Association has announced the winners of their James Farmer Scholarships. Each recipient is enrolled in the James Farmer Scholars Program and must have demonstrated exceptional community service and academic excellence while in high school. This scholarship is awarded in honor of civil rights activist, distinguished professor and winner of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the late Dr. James L. Farmer Jr. Out of three local finalists and representing James Monroe High School in first place, the recipient of a thousand dollar scholarship is Matthew Small, son of Mr. Larry Small and Mrs. Lysette Small. Congratulations, students. Recognitions, I'm sorry. Thank all of our students for the fine job that you are doing. Keep up the great work. Uh, and remember us when you come into your kingdoms. <laughs> At this time, um, you are free to leave unless you would like to stay for the remainder of our, ser of our service. I think I'm in church. I know. 
Reverend you, Bailey. You, you would know it because I take up an offering. <laughs> Thanks for bringing your bike. The next part of our meeting is the hearing of citizens. Are there any citizens wishing to address the board? Any citizens wishing to address the board? Seeing none, we move on in our agenda to our consent agenda. Dr. Melton. Consent agenda, which includes tuition rates for 2017-18, the 2017-18 local plan for career and technical education, uh, Perkins funds, and the VSBA business honor roll. May I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Moved by Ms. Miller Richards. Second. Second by Ms. Holmes. Are there any clarifying questions or comments? Do we want to say who got the business honor roll? I mean, is that something? Usually. We can. Do we know? Yes. Chick-fil-A at Central Park did, and Allergy, I believe it's Allergy Partners of Fredericksburg. If I got that wrong, I apologize. I wasn't planning on doing that. Yeah, it's in the packet. Right? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is correct. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> uh, next action item, personnel. Recommend the board approve the personnel list as presented along with the addendum. So moved. Moved by Ms. miller Richards. second by Ms. Ream. Any discussion? We will need a roll call vote, please. Uh, Ms. Boyd? Yes. Ms. Holmes? Yes. Ms. Kay? Yes. Ms. Miller Richards? Yes. Ms. Rain? Yes. Reverend Bailey? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Our next action item is the first reading policy revision. Dr. Melton? I recommend that the school board adopt the policy revisions as recommended by the Virginia School Boards Association Policy Services on first reading. May I have a motion to approve the recommendation, please? So moved. moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Holmes, second by Ms. Boyd. Any discussion? I just have a quick question. Are, are we not, so, we don't have to do milk anymore? Is that, like, that was in the nutrition stuff that they had crossed out milk. We have to provide meals, but milk was, like, crossed out. Oh, <laughs> okay. I didn't know who to direct it to. They actually consider milk to be part of the traditional lunch. Oh. So they cross it out as a separate entity. It's okay. actually expected to be part of the overall breakfast and lunch. Okay, thank you. I was You're just welcome. confused about that. Have a discussion? Mm -mm. Yeah, I was like, what? Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion 
carries unanimously. Our next item is our school calendar for 2017-18. Dr. Mel, do you have a recommendation? I do. I recommend that the board approve the school calendar for 2017-18 as distributed. Come on. Second. Who are his home second? Richard. And we discussed that last month, but when will you all put out the calendar? Well, we had to wait for you to, right, approve, to approve it. it. So and then we'll out. send it to the printer, and that takes how long, Laura? Ten days? Two weeks? It takes about two weeks. About two weeks before we get it back. And will it be online before then, do you think? And we can put it online tomorrow. Okay. This will be online. That's what I was, okay. Fancy one street plan, it won't take about two weeks. Okay. But you'll have that one online tomorrow. Okay, super. <coughs> graduation listed on that one? Yes. Okay, that was. Sorry. Oh. Okay. No. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries unanimously. Next item is our additional item 3A, which is school calendar for 2016 17. Dr. Melton. I recommend that the school board approve Friday, April 14th as a holiday for all personnel. So move. Moved by Ms. K. Second. Second by Ms. Boyd. Any discussion? That's for this year. Any discussion? <laughs> Session? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's for all, all employees. Aye. Aye. Any opposition? <clears throat> <laughs> Seeing none, the motion carries unanimously. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Next item is the Y <coughs> Network proposal selection. I recommend the board accept the proposal for construction of the wide area network from FTS Fiber at a cost of $583,561 with an additional cost of $1,750 per year for maintenance of the network. In addition, I recommend that the board accept the proposal from CDW-G in the amount of $42,990 for provision of network equipment related to the wide area network. So moved. Moved by Mr. Richard. Second. Second by Ms. Boyd. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All Informational items. First up is instructional presentation, K-12 reading list study. Good evening. I would like to introduce tonight our middle school and high school English department chairs, Ms. Emma Coombs for Walker Grant and Mr. Joe Crawley for James Monroe. In response to a request from board member, I believe, Ms. Miller Richards, um, Ms. Coombs and Mr. Crawley will be discussing the required reading list for grades six through 12 after they reviewed and reevaluated. They are here tonight to discuss their findings and results. Thank you. Good evening. Um, Mr. Crawley and I were asked to come together by Dr. Thomas to look through our selection of reading materials from 6th to 12th grade, focusing largely on our advanced and honors classes. So we came up with sort of three goals when we started. Number one was to make sure that our reading selections had cross-curricular connections, um, emphasized by IB a breadth of reading materials and also that we ensured that there was a lack or there was purposeful repetition if at any at all. So we looked at vertical alignment. We tried to make sure that all of our stories, um, short stories and our novels were chosen in a way that was reflective of the grade level they were appropriate for. And we also made sure that the cross curricular connections um, had something to do with usually science or our uh, social studies classes. So if you look, board members, you'll see that we have compiled a list for advanced honors all the way from 6th through 12th grade. And um, 
the primary goal, as Ms. Coombs mentioned, was limiting the repetition of text between uh, reading at Walker Grant and then at James Monroe. And there had been some um, lots of overlap in the past that we've worked to eliminate, and with some small exceptions that we will go into in just a couple moments, um, that's been accomplished. Um, there really is very, very little, just a small handful of text that might be read by some students at both schools. And we also wanted to make sure we provided a variety of literary genres and forms at both schools per grade level and, and per um, uh, level of the course as well, with the idea of not wanting to have students who maybe prefer a short story or a play stuck reading nothing but novels for a year or, or that sort of scenario. Um, and if you'll look again at your, at your list there, um, Ms. Coombs will take us through a sample from the Walker Grant list, and then I'll take us through a sample from the James Monroe list. So in advance for sixth grade English, our students will start off reading Wonder. And the rationale or the content connection for that is an introduction to middle school and also the focus on um, appropriate socializing and then anti-bullying. So we think that's a good way to begin the year. And they actually read that novel both in our advanced and our honors class. The second is Bud Not Buddy, which connects to our 1920s unit. And then Number the Stars and Diary of Anne Frank. And those are paired texts because we wanted examples of fiction and nonfiction. And the, the slide presented here is our Advanced English 11 reading list. And just a couple of items to highlight there, um, especially with regards to the um, cross-curricular aspect um, with VA U.S. History being the 11th grade history course they're taking. Um, reading the Crucible, we can focus on colonial America, Puritanism, as well as the Cold War, McCarthyism. Um, reading the Great Gatsby, we can focus on the Roaring Twenties, the Lost Generation, the Jazz Age. And so trying to make sure our English teachers and history teachers are kind of aware of what each other are doing and, and building off of each other as best as possible. Um, we've also included some options for teachers, in some cases um, for teachers who prefer a particular text to another or if they've got a group of students who they think would respond better to a particular text versus another one as well. And as I mentioned before, there are a couple of examples of still duplications taking place between the two schools, um, very minor ones we believe. Um, some short stories by Edgar Allan Poe are required reading at Walker Grant and are optional texts at James Monroe. Um, the thinking there is that reading something again, as long as it isn't too, um, too serious of an extent, can be a benefit. Um, you're reading it from a more mature perspective a lot of times, um, perhaps specifically with stories like those by Poe, you might focus on the suspense or mystery aspects in the plot at Walker Grant while delving into more of the deeper literary aspects when they encounter them again, maybe as 10th graders at James Monroe. And there are a couple of other texts, usually as excerpts at the high school, that do overlap on um, uh, sorry, Beowulf, um, the Mort Arthur, and the Canterbury Tales that are read in both 8th grade and 12th grade. And again, the, the idea with allowing those overlaps to remain in our minds is that the students as seniors in high school will be coming at them with much more mature and experienced perspectives and hopefully getting something much more out of it than they did in encountering it four years prior. And we also plan to make these available to parents um, now at the beginning of the year so that they kind of can see, especially as sixth graders, what their children are going to be reading from sixth to twelfth grade. It does provide a really nice overview and the rationale for reading it. Um, and it's great how you all have worked across curricular lines with um, your colleagues to put it, to also put these um, works in context so the students aren't reading about something they haven't learned in history yet, um, that type of thing. Are there any other questions for us? Thank you for doing this. No. Will, you, will this be anywhere on our website? Yeah. I certainly think we can do that. Sure. Okay. I'm not sure where you put that, but. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Financial report. Good evening. The uh, figures and funding are reflective through the end of February, and uh, everything is going pretty much according to plan. I will say that uh, the positive variance on the expenditures, uh, 2.36, uh, is a little unusual or fluctuation. It has to do with some timing of uh, paying, paying for expenditures. I do know I was working on this uh, report for next month today, and that number is going to drop down closer to 2% by the time you see this report again. Are there any specific questions about any of these that I can field from you tonight? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
update on original Walker Grant renovation project. All right. Uh, good evening, Chairman, Dr. Milton, all of our remaining invited guests. Uh, bi monthly, as you all know, we provide an update on the Walker Grant Center. We have to make sure we continue to say that. I know it's a, it's a change for a lot of us. Um, right now, we're kind of in a good transition phase of moving from phase one to phase two. Mike, which one that first? Middle one? Okay. <laughs> this is a, an example of one of our Head Start classrooms. Uh, one of the main things I wanted to be able to point out to all of you all is the additional cubby space that we have in the windows as well as some of the seating arrangements. This really allows for additional collaboration, which uh, really piggies back on a lot of the things that we are looking to do once our PYP program gets started. As you can see in the background right there, we also have one of the active walls which will be present in, in every classroom, as well as in the executive meeting room, school board meeting room. Uh, we want to make sure that we have this state-of-the-art technology for every instructional area that we have throughout the building. This is the back side of the temporary classroom. As you all know, we had to, uh, to purchase four different partitions or dividers, eight feet by eight feet. I wanted to make sure that we provide the opportunity for this long classroom here, which is really in the back side of it, which leads directly into the school board meeting room. Um, you can see in a, in a corner right there that the windows that we have, which we end up over spring break having our automatic electrical blinds that will be installed, which will be controlled by a remote or a push of the button. Um, this area right here is the old auditorium area that currently right now is being used for one temporary classroom and as well as two office spaces for a lot of the uh, senior staff that works in the Head Start program. This is the Head Start temporary classroom that is right off of the gymnasium. This is actually the area that will, uh, beginning July, the week of July 10th, will become uh, the director of uh, assessment and accountabilities area, Ms. Lori Bridey. Um, right now, as you can see, we have a large divider area that's actually open that will divide up her storage area from her actual uh, office area for, for her, Ms. Werman. But we kind of did a makeshift right there. We, we already have put the floor tiles in, but we wanted to make sure that a lot of the furniture that was taken from uh, the old version of original Walker Grant was placed in here. I think the teachers and the Head Start staff have done a tremendous job of making use of all the space and being very, very flexible, especially since we really only have one divider to separate in one classroom from the other. Uh, the staff has done a great job at making sure that the kids stay safe, but also to guarantee they can get their instructional activities in throughout the day. This is very, uh, our bus lane, this will actually uh, hold four full-size buses as well as an additional special education bus. As you all know, when we first started this, pro this project, we had some concerns from some of our neighbors that live in the townhouses there uh, due to the, the fact that any time that the Head Start program or Early Childhood Special Education program was departing in the afternoon because of the stop bars that would be up, no cars would go by. Um, so this was the last adjustment that, that Dr. Melton suggested to Mosley Architectures and to English Construction. Uh, we have the bus lane that has been installed. I brought Billy Alexander, our transportation supervisor, out because we wanted to make sure that wherever we put the stop bar at, it's going to be enough room to, for the buses to be able to kind of manipulate that turn as they begin to come down the road. Um, with all the buses, we have a total of seven buses that work with the Head Start program. Uh, they kind of arrive during staggered times. We haven't had a, we had a chance today and other days where we've seen four buses in the lane, one bus uh, on, on the backside kind of waiting. And Ms. Woodward and her staff do a great job. As soon as we move one bus out, the other buses kind of pull up. So we really have not had any break or flow of traffic. Uh, this is something that once our uh, finalized playground is done, once the tarp comes down, this fence comes, comes down, this will be a parking area to, on the other side of the fence as well as the permanent oversized playground. It will really give you a good view of how things will work so that the kids will have a nice view of their buses as they're coming out of the building. New gymnasium here. Um, this was probably one of our crown jewels of the project. Uh, we kind of reduced the size of the, of the gymnasium to, you know, to create some additional office space on the side hall, which is currently being used by Ms. Woodward and her staff, also to, to make sure that we had space for our new clinic. As you can see here, we have those themes of the blue and gray that are being used. We have our side um, sound panels there. We also have a total of 12 speakers that are in the ceiling in the gym. I can remember Kenny from Business when he was testing it out, he was playing some of the worst elevator music there was. <laughs> but at least know that we had great sound effect that was coming through there. 
And we're really looking forward to the days where Dr. Melton, after a stressful day, will come downstairs and shoot a couple of baskets and probably lose to John Russ in the game of horse. <laughs> um, the, the parquet floor that we put down is actually it's a floor that actually gives about three inches worth of cushion. Um, this will help to prevent any injuries from some of our kids that fall, but also will help us for the kids that are actually riding their tricycles and bikes. Uh, the good part about this is this comes in uh, three sections. We have a two-year warranty on the installation, but we actually have a 20-year warranty on the floor itself. So we're really impressed and excited about this new floor that we, that we put in there. And we have two goals, even though the actual court itself is about 66 square feet. We do have two goals in there. We provide great opportunities for some of our alternative ed kids to play basketball, as well as our partnership that we have with the Boys and Girls Club in the afternoons. The new clinic, as you can see right there, the Head Start nurse is posing for us ever so greatly. <laughs> um, we're really excited that we have enough room for cots, shower. As you can see, we also have some of this equipment in there. It's just really a much better space than what we had previously. Um, we wanted to make sure that we still kept the blue and gray themes in that door that you see right there is where you have privacy for your own bathroom. We also put some safety features in to make sure that another student can actually lock themselves in the bathroom. Um, but we're really excited about the space. Every time I go over there and speak with the nurse, he is just thrilled to be in, the, in this area. And we also have countertops that are kind of out of the picture right here and storage areas for all of our medical supplies and some things that Ms. Woodward and her staff were kind of uh, storing all throughout the building. It can now actually be housed within the clinic. Okay, so now let's switch gears. Phase two officially began the week of February 20th. And the view I'm showing you right here is the area that is actually to the right of where the old kitchen is. You can see the larger windows here will represent the upstairs classrooms. Those classrooms will be number 207 through 214. Um, also some additional uh, spaces that will be used for storage, et cetera. This is one of the first pieces, if you all remember from phase one when we had it done, that we actually gut the entire area first then we put the windows up, then we work on the infrastructure. And the main reason they put the windows up first is to isolate the workers, but also to protect any of the materials that are occurring once the drywall and plaster, things of that nature are being installed. So this is actually how it looks now. This used to be the area for the upstairs classroom. The elevator is all the way at the other end of that hallway right there. So you can see the demolition is definitely underway. We've already had the asbestos abatement has already occurred. And the transformation occurs each and every day. Um, similar to how things were in phase one, you really see a large difference with the work that English Construction is doing uh, every week. Uh, we did notice that we have a couple of areas that had some roof damage. You already knew about a lot of roof issues that we had at the original Walker Grant, but the Walker Grant Center from that transformation we're doing with the roof. We still had some gypsum and some other concrete areas left that were being used that, to patch those things, but not cost us any additional cost to get it done. But it's just really interesting how you can actually see the transformation of the building actually take place every seven to ten days. This is the same window structure I showed you from the outside. This is the same view from the inside. Um, one of the things that kind of was very tedious to some of the English construction workers, you can see in the left-hand corner there, that used to be one of the old chalkboards and bulletin boards that used to be there. Because it's been up there for 30 and 40 years, getting that glue off the wall is a very tedious process, and the guys aren't too happy about it, but Mr. Blanton does a great job of keeping them motivated, especially to make sure that we keep our timeline up to date. So as a look ahead, uh, the biggest delay that we had from phase one was completion of the front atrium. That is the glass structure that I showed you guys in the very first picture that I've kind of used as a theme. Um, the only issue that we had with that is that the steel that arrived was actually a quarter of an inch thinner than what it was supposed to be, which is against the rules for our foundations, especially when you get to the top, top upper levels. When you drive by the Walker Grant Center right now, you can see the, ex the exterior of the steps have already been completed. But we're actually just waiting for that glass and the rest of that steel for the top level so we can kind of close that off. That should take place by May 17, 2017 is the date that has been given to us. Um, during that same time frame, as soon as we open up that front atrium area, our new marquee will also be constructed and created uh, by uh, English Construction. It will be the same brick structure as the brick itself. It will say Walker Grant Center. I'll make sure next uh, time that we do this presentation in, in June that I will show you a picture of the new marquee, what it looks like. Um, in July 2017, Dr. Mellon and I have come up with a timeline to begin moving uh, all of our central office staff into the second floor. That move will begin July 10th. Here's our plan. We'll basically move one or two departments uh, a day, uh, usually in the morning times. We also want to make sure that we give our maintenance guys enough time to do their normal responsibilities and duties in the afternoon. Uh, final department to move will be uh, the Department of Finance because they have requested to be the last group to, to go just to make sure they have payroll and everything completed. <laughs> 
Uh, August 2017, after we have had uh, phase two completed, this is probably right around August 15th or so, we will then move the remaining of our central office staff into the area. This will also allow us to move Ms. Woodward and her staff out of the temporary areas they're in right now. This will also allow us to move our early childhood special education staff back into their permanent locations. I've had some conversations with Ms. Steintonick and Ms. Wilbert about making sure that we set a day or two before the teachers are supposed to come back for their normal record reporting in August to allow them to move, to allow them to transfer. Uh, during the time frame where we are moving the central office staff into uh, the Walker Grant Center, a lot of the furniture and temporary equipment that is there will be stored in the gym for about three weeks to a month until phase two is completed. So this way the maintenance guys really only have to move things one time. We don't want to try, continue to have to put things into storage. That's not cost effective for us. And it also creates a lot of work. Uh, tomorrow at two o'clock, Dr. Melton, Mr. Russ, Mr. George and I have a punch through, uh, punch list walkthrough of phase one. We have a couple of things that's been pointed out to us that we need to make sure that are done. Um, we also want to make sure that everything's going to be aesthetically pleasing. Anytime you have construction, even though we have everything that was completed, there are still a few things that, that we just don't like. So we're going to make sure that everything is perfect, including adding some trim, some sanding, some moving of some tiles, things of that nature. And then once the temporary classrooms are out of the meeting room, that also includes installation of sound panels into the meeting room, bringing in the, the, the two 80-inch uh, monitors, bringing in the additional technology equipment. Those are some of the things that will be taking place from uh, June through August to make sure that by the time we have our August school board meeting, that will be the first meeting that we're looking for, having the board to actually have their first meeting in the executive meeting room. Really excited about that. Any questions? Exciting. It is. It is, it is exciting. And can I know that you already do this, but please pass along our thanks to the staff who has moved time and again throughout this process, particularly the teachers in their classrooms. And all teachers have a lot of stuff. Yes. Um, but I imagine preschool teachers especially have a lot of teaching aids and things that they have to have had to move some mm -hmm. of them more than once. Correct. I sure will. So that's impressive that we've been able to keep folks in that building during yeah. this process. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Old business. We have about four items for old business first. Regular school board meeting May 1st, 2017, here at the council chambers. Second, we have a joint meeting with the city council April the 11th at 5:30. Please make note that that meeting will be at the Executive Plaza, which is 601 Caroline Street on the third floor. Yeah. I would have been right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would too. I would on the third floor. On the third floor. Please make a note of that. I know you want to be there and on time. So please note that. VSBA hot topic. Uh, at this time, we don't have any Fredericksburg board members attending. But if you would like to attend, please let Ms. Wright know that as soon as possible. VSBA Law Conference, that's in June the 4th. Anybody going to that? It says the 2nd. Oh. Right? Yeah, June 2nd. It's the 2nd? It's yeah. a Friday, whatever that Friday right, hold is. on. Yeah, it is the 2nd. That's... Okay. Okay. I'll probably go. 2nd. Sorry about that. No, June 2nd. Mr. Russ and I usually go to that as well. I like that one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Do we know, just going back for a second, do we know what the April 20th hot topic is? Yes. Um, oh, no, I thought I had it here. I don't. Okay, I'll look it Sorry. up. Sorry. No problem. I think, I think if I remember correctly, it's um, school boards and what they do for the community. Right, how they and the they, That's it. Yeah, I was yeah, trying I to think, think of it yeah. as well. Okay. Okay. Very good. Before we move on to new business, I have a note from Ms. Wright to remind the board members that the regular meeting in July is scheduled for July 10th. Make sure you note that on your calendar and let her know if there are scheduling conflicts. Remember last year we had for a July difficult 10th. time oh, getting yeah. a quorum together, and that's our reorganizational meeting. Right, and I will be out of town for that. Oh. Dr. Debbie. Okay. 
All right, new business. Board doc training. Staff members will be receiving training on. She has a note here on the 15th and 16th. But for us, it's the 16th. Oh, it's staff. Okay. Got you. For us, it's the 16th. Staff members, you guys are on the 15th. Training for the board is scheduled for 6 p.m., but could possibly be moved to 5 p.m. if there are members who are available. That's something we need to discuss, and we'll let her know. Is everybody good with 6, or is 5 better? For, for May 16th? For May 16th. I will be in California. Um, I talked to her about the potential of remoting in from there. Um, so six is better for me for that because it'll be three hours earlier. But six is better for you if okay. if we're able to do that. Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. Six work for everybody. It's fine. Okay. I'm keep it at six. Any other new business? Yes, okay. thank you. We have one of our uh, award recipients who came in. It's over here. Oh, it's over there. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Melton, you want to join? Make your attention. Card. Right. And get your applause. <laughs> Yay. Carter was one of the academic quiz team uh, captains for us. <laughs> Here, I'll yeah. do it. Wait, wait, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Wait, Carter, get back. I'll do it real quick for you. Come on, come on. I have mine's right here. I was just putting the dates in. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Jan. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, I wanted to uh, ask, do you have an update on um, what our current status is for um, the Board of Distinction? Uh, I do, unless Dr. Melton has. Okay. I don't. Yes. Um, we are still okay. Uh, as long as we get the, uh, the, I think what was in question was the business honor roll. Um, and we've taken care of that. Uh, we need to schedule a retreat, and I'm not sure when that has to happen. Dr. Melton, do you know? We'll I thought this whole, everything's like on a two-year cycle, so okay. you have two years to complete. I right. think, without Debbie being here, don't. Right. But the, the question was whether or not we could make it, and the answer is yes. Yes, we can. Yes, yes we can. What, what about right. that April 20th hot topic? Do we need attendance so for people. that for two people yeah april 20th so we work on that that that's the problem question. is that the night before jarvis and i are going to be going to the regional the regional and that's also during, spring. That's yeah. also during the week of spring break spring it break. is spring break right. it is spring break right. but you know right. we'll be there on the 19th right. so that's what makes the 20th you guys especially going spring hard break? gone gone out of here <laughs> well since uh mr russ didn't go out to Withville or wherever we were supposed to go. <laughs> oh. You were going to go. <laughs> All right. Well, we need to get that figured out. Yeah. But right now we are on track. If we miss that, that might change things. That was rescheduled. What was? The, uh, it has to be two board members. The with, it? Yeah, it yeah. can't be. The, the staff member one. doesn't count. <laughs> say what? <laughs> What'd you say, Mr. Russ? <laughs> we might want to ask for special dispensation for that one. One, I thought that there was something about that we didn't have to do all the hot topics. And two, because it is scheduled during our spring break. Right. Um, you know, I think they might they might give us some leeway with that. Oh, and I might be able to go. Okay. 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 So maybe the special circumstances is one board member instead of two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will um, lobby Gina mm -hmm. about that. Okay, very good. For the good of the order, 
Um, tomorrow night is STEM night at Humerser, 5 to 6.30. Be there, be square. Get it? STEM night, square. <laughs> All right, forget it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. <laughs> So moved. moved. <laughs> second. Um, second. It was moved and seconded. I think Ms. Boyd, uh, Ms. K. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.